Hello and welcome to the first API and microservices project. So in this one, we're going to be creating a timestamp server. And this is a very simple app. All it does is it has this root called slash API slash timestamp like this. And what it does is if you give it a date like this, it'll return the Unix timestamp for that. That's a number of um, seconds, I think, that have passed since 1st of January 1970. Although this is in milliseconds for some reason. And it also returns the UTC date. And if you put it in a timestamp as well, it does the same thing. And if you put nothing in it, what it will do is it'll return the current timestamp and the current date right here. So that's all we have to do. Now, to get started with this, just click the um, repository link. And you want to go and click code and then copy this link right here. And in Glitch, just click new project, import from GitHub, and then paste it into here, and then press OK. And it will start building that project for you. And this usually takes a little bit of time to do, so we just have to be patient here and wait for it. And I'm just going to rename this. So I'm going to say uh, free code camp timestamp. Um, and I'll just put my username. And now that we are, oh, we're still importing here, so we just want to wait for this. And for this challenge, we have these um, just six user stories to fulfill. So this is a, actually a much simpler challenge, much, much simpler project than any of the previous ones. So um, yeah, this is just being weird. So I'm just going to refresh it and see what happens. So, okay, so it looks like we have it imported right now. And um, we have a readme here, and we'll be writing all our code in the server.js. And if we click share and then live app and copy it, and then paste it into the address bar here, this is the URL of where our app will be hosted. And this is what we need to be um, posting here so that we can start marking our app so if we just click this right now none of the tests should pass but now that we've got our app running we're ready to go so the very first thing that we need to do for our app is just set up some roots so we need a root for um this slash api slash timestamp thing and then a date string or a unix timestamp and the way we set up roots is through express and if we look in package.json we can see express is already installed for us and in the server.js we've created an express app in the form of this app right here so we can use this app to create roots so what we can do here first is the URL for the timestamp is slash API slash timestamp. And then it will take in an input. And this can be a date string or a Unix time. So let's set up a root here. So we can call the uh, we can call a method on the app to set up a root. And the method is a get root right here because it says get here. And also since we're putting it into the address bar, it's a get root. Um, the path would be slash API slash timestamp like this. And um, we're also going to be taking in either a date string here or a Unix timestamp. So I'm just going to call this input. And we're going to be using the request query here. So I'm going to put this colon here. So again, if you look at the request query video, you'll understand all of this. So now that we have the path in, let's create a middleware function. So this is just going to take in the request and the response here. And what I'm also going to do is for our response, um, what it usually is, I think, is a an object. Um, I'll just double check that. Yeah, this is a JSON object. So what I'm going to just do here is um, I'm just going to create a, a JavaScript object here to put in our JSON. So I'm just going to call this let response object equals and then just make a blank object here. So this will, well, this will be what we use in our response. Now, what I'm just going to do for now is I'm just going to um, call the JSON method on the response to send JSON back. And I'm just going to put this response object in here. And this response object, again, is an empty object. So if I save this now and go to like slash timestamp slash, and then um, I just copy this date string here. What it should do, hopefully do is, oops, what it should hopefully do is return an empty object for us. This should be this should be slash API slash timestamp. My bad. Yeah. Uh, 
Oops. Yeah, I'm not doing very well at this, as you can see. There we go. So we can see that it returns an empty object. So we've now got our route set up. So the next thing to do now is to capture whatever input this is, whether it's a date string or a Unix timestamp. And whenever we have this colon like this, this gets treated as a URL parameter. And remember that URL parameters get stored in the requests param object. So what we can do here is we can just say let input equals request dot params dot and then the variable name here would just be input. So we can just put input like this. So what this will do is whatever we put in here, it'll be stored as input in the requests params object. And we've just assigned it to this input variable right here. And this will be a string. And what I'm gonna just do here is put the input to be returned for now, just so we can test that we've got it. So if I go to this address again, and we have this date string, and I refresh it, we can see that the input has been returned. And if I just put anything here, like hello, for example, it will return hello. So we've figured out a way now to capture the input. And now we can use start using this input. So now that we've managed to capture the input, what we can do is start looking at fulfilling these tests. And the first one says that it should take in a valid date. So this is just a date string and it needs to return the correct Unix timestamp. So there's a way that we can determine whether the input is a date string or a Unix timestamp. And if I just go to the home page here, I think it describes what they look like. So it says like um, a valid date string um, would look something like this. So the a key distinction with the date string is if we just look at JavaScript um, new date on W3 schools, and it will show you the various ways that we can take in a date string. And if you look at the date formats page, it says that it can look like this, like this, or like this. And a key thing to note here is that the date string will have either a dash here, a slash, or a space and that's missing from the Unix timestamps because the Unix timestamp is just a number by itself. So if it has either a space, a slash or a dash, it means it's a date string. And free code cam says that they use ISO dates, I think. Um, yeah, ISO. So it means that all the dates will have a dash at least, and we don't have to worry about these. So what we can do here is say that if input, and we can use a string includes method here. So we can do input dot includes, and includes just returns true if a particular character is in the string. And what we can do here is put a dash. So if it includes a dash, then that means that it is a, um, a, a date string. And the way we can create a timestamp from a date string is first we have to convert it into a date. And we can call new date with a date string as we can see um, here. So we can put any valid date string in as an argument for new date and it will convert that into a JavaScript date. And then what we can do is call another method to convert this into a timestamp. But if we look at the um, example set, example right here, and we look at the um, one of the examples, we can see that the the um, the Unix timestamp gets stored in this field called Unix. So that's the field that we need to set here. So we can say a response object and then set the Unix field. And we can here, we can create a new date from the date string. And sorry, not the date string, the input because we've already verified that the input is the date string here. And then we can call this method called get time. And if we look at um, date get time, what it does is it returns a number of milliseconds since Unix epoch. And it says JavaScript uses milliseconds the units of measurement. And it says in our um, description right here that uh, the not here actually, it says it in the glitch readme that it take it has to be in milliseconds. So this is fine. So it'll convert it into milliseconds for us. So 
once again, what this does is if the input includes a dash, it means we've established the date string. And what it does is it sets the response object's Unix field to a new date object that it created from this date string, and it calls the getTime method to convert it back into a Unix timestamp. And then we can just return this response object here. And if I save that now and I go back to this, and refresh it, we can see that we have an object here and the Unix field has been set to this timestamp right here. So that should be everything for that. So if we submit that, we can see that the first test is now passing. So if we look at the second test now, what it says is that when we give a valid date string, it needs to return the correct UTC, UTC string. And again, if we look at the um, example app, we can see that the UTC string gets stored in this field called UTC. And the way we can create a UTC string is there's a method called get UTC string. And what this method does is you call it on any valid date and it converts it into a UTC string for us. So this is very convenient. So what we can do here is that if it includes a dash, again, we've established that it's um, a date string. So I'm just gonna put this here. It's a date string. Um, what we can do here is set the UTC field and we can just say response object and then put UTC like this and then again we want to create a new date from the date string so we'll give the input here which is the date string and here we can call the get uh, UTC sorry it's not get UTC string it's called to UTC string. So we'll say 2 UTC and these UTC is in capital letters by the way um, string like this and if I save this now and I run this root again for this timestamp and refresh it we can see that we have this UTC field in our JSON object and we have the UTC string right here. So that should have completed the second test now so let's submit it and have a look and yeah we can see that the second test has now passed. So let's look at the third test now. And what it says is that if we give it a Unix date, so this is a Unix timestamp, it will return the correct Unix timestamp. And it's been ticked right here. But if we actually look at this and we put the API timestamp and then put one of the timestamps in for, as the example, and I refresh it, it actually returns an empty object. So I have no idea why that's coming up with a tick, but we'll fix it regardless. So here, if it includes a dash, we've established that it must be a date string because the Unix timestamps are just numbers. So if I put else here, well, this else means that if it doesn't include a dash, it means it has to have been a timestamp. So we can put timestamp here. And now we have a Unix timestamp to work with. Um, it's important to note that this input here is captured as a string and we're working with a string. So that our first um, priority is probably to convert it into an integer because if we look at the description here it says that the timestamp needs to be an integer and not a string. So the way we can do that is use the parseInt method and this is a vanilla JavaScript method and all we do is we give it a string and it converts it into an integer for us. So we can just say input equals and then parseInt input. So what this does is it converts the input string into an integer and assigns it back into the variable input. So the next thing to do is set the uh, UTC, sorry, the Unix field of the response object. And since we have an integer with the um, Unix timestamp, it's, it's quite tempting to just set it to this input integer right here. But it's actually better to convert it into a date first and then convert it back into a timestamp just to make sure that this integer is a valid timestamp. Otherwise, we're just returning a wrong value, I guess. So what I'm going to do is set the, um, sorry, this should be the response object. I'm going to set the uh, Unix field of this. And what I'm going to do is create a new date. And if we go to the um, new date constructor, we can see that we can put in the number of milliseconds um, it, since the, uni, um, the January 1st, 1970, which is the Unix time. 
and it creates it a new date for us. And we can just put this number directly in here. Now, Unix timestamps are generally in seconds, but all the ones that are used here, like this one, is already in milliseconds. So we don't have to worry about it. Usually they're actually three digits shorter than this and they look like this. But yeah, they've just used milliseconds already. So what we can do here is just, since we have input here, which is this integer right here, we can just put input in here. And then I'm just going to convert it back into Unix time by calling the get time method. And again, this this seems a bit annoying to convert it into a date and back again, but when we're checking for errors and stuff, it's actually better to make sure that we're returning a proper date rather than just bouncing back the value. So if I save that now and I refresh this, we can see that we have an object now with the Unix field and it's been set to the timestamp. So that should be... Um, test three completed. Again, it was already ticked before, but now we know. So test three only required us to set the Unix field to the Unix timestamp. But what I'm going to do is just add a little tweak here so that we set the UTC field as well. And this is completely optional. So what I'm just going to say is the response objects UTC is again, we can create a new date from the input because it's an integer with milliseconds. And we can say to UTC string here and if we refresh this now we can see that we ha also have a UTC field when we give a timestamp and this is completely optional but I think it just makes it seem a bit better and the example had it so if we look at user story 4 now what it says is that it should return the expected error message for an invalid date. So if we want to look at what the expected error message is, if we just go to the home page, it has to be a, an object with just the string error as a key and then invalid date as a string as the value. So we want to return this. But how do we know that um, we have an invalid date? Well, what happens is that when um, we try to pass a date or we, we try to create a date object from an invalid input what this will do is it'll come up as like undefined or null or something so the way we can determine whether we have whether our input is invalid or not is that these will return a, a null or an undefined value so that this unix and this utc will be undefined or null so what we can say is we can put an exclamation mark here and we can say if response object um unix or um that's a button a uh, response object utc and what this means, if I put this exclamation mark here, is, is it means if either of these values, so if this value is null or undefined, or this value is null or undefined, then we'll run the code inside this. And if this is the case, if either of these are null or undefined, it means we had an invalid input because there was a problem creating a date. And what we can do here is we can call the JSON object on the response, and we can give it the object that they wanted. So we can put error here, and then the invalid date string. So if I save this now, and I swap out this timestamp for some random string right here, we can see that we get the object saying error invalid date. So that should be everything for test four now. So let's submit it and have a look. And yeah, we can see that test four has now passed. So if we look at test five now, what it says is that for an empty date parameter, it should return the current time in Unix format. So an empty date parameter means that we specify nothing here. So if I just specify nothing and press enter and we have a look, we can see that we it says cannot get. So that means that we have to create a new root here for when there's nothing. There's no other way around it apart from creating a new root. And let's do that. So underneath this root that we created, which has an input, let's create another get root for the app. And this time the root is just slash API slash timestamp. And there's no input this time because we just have nothing here and we're creating a root here. And once again, we can um, create a middleware function here that takes in a request and a response. And what it wants us to do is to return the current time in Unix format. So again, we need to set the Unix field of the response object. 
So we, we de declare the response object outside of this get root. So we have access to it here as well. So we can say response object. And we want to set the Unix field. And what we want to do is first create a, a new date. And we want it has to be the current time. So if we just call the standard new date constructor, what it does is I think it just creates it with the current time anyway. Yeah, it says with the current date and time. So we already have a date object with the current time here. And again, we can just call the get time method on this to convert this into a Unix timestamp. And after this, what we just want to do here is we just want to call the JSON method on the response and we want to give the response object here. So what this will do is when we go to, for the root where there's no input added here, what it does is it sets the Unix field of this response object right here to a new date that's formed from the current date and it calls the get time method on it to set this to a Unix timestamp and then it just returns this as a JSON. So if we save this now and refresh it, we can see that we have an object here with the Unix timestamp right here. So that should be test 5 completed, so let's submit it and have a look. And yeah, we can see that that's worked. Now, if we look at test 6, what it says is that it should, hand, it should again handle empty date, but it should return the current time in UTC format. So once again, uh, we, we can set the UTC field here, and we can say response object and put UTC here this time. And again, we can create a new date with the current time and we can just call the new date method to do this. And if we want a UTC string, remember the method to convert a date to a UTC string is the two UTC string method here. So we can just call the two UTC, again, be careful with the capitals here, string method. And what this does is that it sets the UTC field of this response object to a, the current date as a UTC string. So if I save this now and refresh it, we can see that the UTC field has been created and we have a UTC string right here. So that should be all the tests completed right now and we have a completely working um, API here where if we put a date here, it'll return the timestamp and the date, the UTC. If we put a date if we put a timestamp here, it will return the timestamp and the UTC. And if we put nothing here, it will return the current date and time as a timestamp and UTC. So we have a fully working time server now. So if we click I've completed now, we can see that we've finished the project and everything is working. And you can just go ahead and submit that.